Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to upgrade or replace the 2.5 inch SATA drive in a late 2014 Mac Mini. As there are a lot of small parts in a compact space, it's recommended that you watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. We've already backed up our data, shut down and unplugged the Mac Mini, and are working on a static free work surface. We're now ready to begin. The bottom cover of the Mac Mini is attached at three points. To remove the cover, simply insert your nylon pry tool under the edge and lift up near one of the posts until it pops loose. You should then be able to lift up on the cover itself and detach it from the remaining posts. Next, we need to remove the three posts that held the bottom cover on using a Torx T6 screwdriver. Then there are three more T6 screws to remove, which hold the antenna plate in place. You can now lift the antenna plate up and flip it over to the right side. Be careful as it's still attached to the mini by the antenna cable. Remove the Torx T6 screw securing the cable to the mini. You can then disconnect the cable itself by gently lifting it free of its snap connector. Be extremely careful as this connector is easily damaged. You can then set the antenna plate aside. Next, we need to remove the fan. Loosen, but don't remove the three Torx T6 screws holding the fan in the Mini. You should now be able to lift the fan slightly, which will allow you to access the fan cable connector. Disconnect this by lifting up on the connector from the cable side. You can now remove the fan entirely and set it aside. Next, we're going to disconnect the SATA cable. First, remove the Torx T6 screw holding the cover plate in place. Then remove the plate itself. You should now be able to lift up on the connector to detach it. Next, we can disconnect the IR sensor connector by lifting it out of its socket. If your Mac Mini had a PCIe SSD installed, we'll need to disconnect that as well. If you don't have one, you can skip this step. The first thing to do is remove the two Torx T6 screws holding the cover in place. Then, remove the cover itself. You can then lift up on the connector to detach it from the logic board. Now we can work on removing the logic board itself. The first step is to remove the T6 screw near the heatsink that secures the logic board to the chassis. Once you've done that, insert the logic board removal tool into these two holes in the board until both sides are fully seated. Angle the tool towards the back of the Mini, and the logic board will start to slide out. Continue pulling on the tool until the clips on the rear panel are clear of the edge of the case. You can then remove the tool. We now have room to disconnect the power cable from the logic board. Simply slide it out of its socket. You should then be able to remove the logic board entirely, and we can move on to the power supply. The first thing we need to do is remove the metal pin holding the power connector in place.
Next, rotate the power connector 90 degrees counterclockwise so that it is no longer secured by the groove that holds it in place. Finally, remove the Torx T6 screw that secures the power supply to the chassis. You can now slide the power supply out of the Mini. Finally, remove this T6 screw securing the drive tray. You should now be able to slide the drive tray out of the Mini. The 2.5 inch drive bay is on the underside of the tray. To remove the drive, we'll first need to remove the Torx T8 screws holding it in, two on each side. You should then be able to remove the drive from the tray. The 2.5 inch drive bay can take either a platter based drive or a solid state drive. For this installation, we're going to install a solid state drive, but the instructions are identical for a platter based one. We need to swap all the mounting pieces from the original drive to the new one. Let's start with the SATA connector. On the bottom side of the drive, there is a small piece of black tape spanning the SATA connectors. Go ahead and peel that tape off. Then slide the connector cable off the drive. You can then slide it into place on the new drive. Turn both drives over and align them so the SATA connectors are facing the same way. We need to move these two pads to the corresponding spots on the new drive. Simply peel them off and place them in the appropriate spots on the new drive. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow them to stick. Now we can put the drive back into the tray. When we do, we need to make sure the SATA ribbon cable goes through this slot in the drive tray. Make sure the drive is laid flat in the tray and secure it with the four Torx T8 screws you removed earlier. Slide the drive tray back into the Mac Mini case until it seats firmly in its place. Then secure it with its Torx T6 screw. Next, slide the power supply back into the Mini, keeping it as flush against the outer edge as possible. It too should settle securely into place with a little adjustment. Once seated, you can secure it with its Torx T6 screw. Make sure the power connector is pushed in and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise so that it locks into its groove. Then, slide the metal clip over the base until it's fully seated.
We can now slide the logic board in until there's a little bit of resistance. This gives us just enough room to slide the power connector back into its slot. Once the power cable is fully seated, you can push the logic board the rest of the way in so that it sits flush along the back edge. Finally, secure the board with the Torx T6 screw you removed earlier. Now it's time to reattach some cables. The first cable we'll reconnect is the one for the PCIe SSD if you have one. If you don't have a PCIe SSD like this, you can skip this part. Press the two connectors together so one seats in the other. Then, replace the connector cover and secure it with its two Torx T6 screws. Next, push the IR connector back into its socket. Then, push the SATA ribbon into place by lining the two connectors up and pushing them together. Then secure the connector with its plate and screw as well. Set the long rear screw of the fan in its socket near the back of the logic board and angle the fan slightly. This will make it easier for you to push the fan connector into its socket. Then, align the fan properly so all the three torque screws are in their receptacles and tighten them down. The last thing to reattach is the airport antenna cable itself. This is a button style connector. Be careful as any side to side motion can detach the connector from the circuit board. Just line the two up and carefully press them together. Once the connector is reattached, secure the cable with its Torx T6 screw. You can now put the antenna grate back into place, making sure all the holes line up. Put the small flat T6 screws in these three spots. Then, put the thick bottom cover posts in these three spots. On the underside of the bottom cover is a ridge that corresponds to this ridge in the antenna grade. These three sockets will grab onto these three posts. Flip the cover over and align the pins and sockets. Then push the cover down to engage them. You can now flip your Mac Mini over, hook it up, and turn it on. 